Uh, I'm really glad to be here. I have my colleague uh, Swati. Um, we work together at Spark, and uh, we are here to share with you. We were told to talk about masters abroad, and I was asking, ma'am, why do you want to send kids for masters abroad? But I will ask that from you guys in a few minutes from now. So my name is Neeraj Khanna. I'm um, um, I've now worked for about 35 years of my life. Um, and uh, a variety of jobs that I've done, it, it, apart from leadership roles also, you don't start with the leadership role. So it's not like my first job was a leadership role. My first job was really, really bad. Um, and I've done many bad jobs and that's why I did good jobs, right? So if any of you think you will do only good jobs, you will not do good jobs. You will have to start with a bad job. Uh, but let's come back to that. So this is something we start all our sessions with. We believe that Everybody has a genius. Everybody has the potential to be successful. Whether you come to ISMI or go to another college or don't go to a college, everybody can be successful. The degree of success, when you find success, what's your definition of success will change. But we can all be successful. But the problem is when the fish is trying to climb the tree. And a greater problem is if the fish is trying to judge its own excellence by its ability to climb the tree, then it will feel it is stupid. So the big part of this application process is research, research, research. Become an expert. You have to become a person who can advise people on how to do this application. Because remember, you're not applying for undergrad. You're not a 17, 18 year old. You will be around 20-ish when you're applying, 20, 21, 22, depending on uh, what you've done. And so. The college is expecting an adult. The college is not expecting a kid. The college is not expecting any errors. The college is not expecting a half-hearted application. Right? So you will need to do a lot of research. Start with an Excel. Start with a Google Sheet where you can start putting your, your list of colleges that you want to look at, uh, the courses you want to look at, the countries you want to look at, and all the information about them. Okay? So as you start doing research, you'll come up with a lot of details. The location, the weather, the tuition fee. Uh, so we've just put a few, the app URL, the deadlines, the specific requirements. But you, there could be a list of 60 criteria in your mind. 50, 60, 70 criteria that you want to look at. There could be five criteria. It depends on who you are. It could be different. Research colleges and courses in detail, right? Like I said, it's not a one day job. Right? So if you want to apply to Wharton, look at the Penn website, look at Wharton, look at their student body, look at what kind of students are coming. Wharton is a very stiff, uptight, you wear a business suit, you drop a pen in the library and you can hear it outside the library. Um, half your batch, if you get into Wharton, will be 10 years plus work experience. Right? So you could have 40 year olds, 35 year olds in your class. I've seen students go abroad and get confused because you've got somebody in your classroom who's got two kids who are, who are in school, in high school, right? So now you need to realize, so that's your competition, right? Your competition is somebody who's worked for 10 years, who's an American or a Brit, and you are going straight or after one year of experience as an international student, and now you want Microsoft to hire you and apply for an H-1B versus somebody who's come with 10 years experience and who's an American. It's very possible, but it's, it can't be done in a clinical manner. So research, finalize the course you want to apply to, shortlist the countries you want to apply to. Every country has its own pros and cons. There are countries where it's cheaper. There are countries where it's faster. There are countries where it's easier to get a work permit at the end of your master's. There are countries where job opportunities are greater. There are, so you need to figure out what works for you. If you want to do this and come back and join your family business, then some things don't matter to you. If you're taking a loan for this, then a lot of things matter to you, right? So our learning is that every person's situation is different. And sometimes we are very shy about saying it out. Right? We don't want to say that my parents can't afford it. We don't want to say that I'm really desperate to go because I want to change my future and my parents' future. 
or whatever the criteria might be, right? Or I have a, a, a dietary restriction, so I'm, I'm allergic to some things and I want to figure out if I'll get that kind of food there. Or I'm a vegetarian and I need to go to a place where I'll get vegetarian food. So research, research, research. Shortlist the countries, make a list of about 20, 25 colleges. Now this is your first list, this is your high level list, 20, 25 colleges. How many colleges you want to apply to is your call. But you can't apply to 25 colleges, you'll go crazy. Or the quality of applications will be pathetic. Okay, so the quality of your application is most important. You can't underestimate the power of the value of the quality of application. Okay. Once your application is ready, you need to go over the whole application three times to make sure there is no spelling mistake. Imagine you're applying for MBA to Wharton and there is a spelling mistake. Like it's crazy, right? I mean, you'll be thrown out. Um, make a list of criteria that is important to you. Shortlist your colleges based on your criteria. Research, research, research. If you go to the Spark website, in the media and blog section, there are some news articles uh, which have quoted Spark, but they're also otherwise talking about the cost. So, there is a chart here on how much will a PG degree from a university cost. So if you go to the website, you will find some articles there. Um, but most countries also allow you to work, right? The, the, the standard is 20 hours a week that you can work alongside your, your, your study. There are colleges which are less rigorous. So for somebody going to Wharton, you have very little time to work, to be honest. It's a very intense program. Um, and you've got to be very academic to deal with it. But for somebody going to um, a community college or let's say, let me not name a college, but an easier college, it will still be dignified, it will still be respectful. And you will have classes maybe three times a week for three to four hours a day. And you will have similar amount of hours to do assignment work. So you can easily take out 20 hours during the week to work and then maybe another 10 hours during the weekend to work. So instead of 20, you can work for 30, 40 hours a week. We've had students who have gone and funded a large part of their undergrad and sometimes have taken a loan and not taken any money from their parents. So those things are possible, but again, it varies from person to person. Um, the selection criteria, largely four things is what colleges look for. The first is your academic strength. In an academic strength, it talks about your GPA, your grades, your letters of recommendation from your professors, everything that shows how good are you in studying, right? When, when foreign countries are looking at international students, there are two things they're looking at, especially from India. Largely two things. One, a higher fee that you will pay. Right? If you're an American student, British student, Canadian citizen, you would pay seven to twelve thousand dollars a year for what an Indian will pay forty to fifty thousand dollars a year. So the one thing they're looking for is a higher tuition fee. The second thing they're looking for is academic strength. The perception globally, and it's partly a reality, is that Indians are very driven towards their academics. They grow up in an academically rigorous environment. So at least the top colleges, again, going back to Wharton, I'm not picking on you, I'm just picking that name. Uh, they are looking for the best of the best academically, right? So if you are at 9.8 GPA, then you're okay. You're not like God's gift to mankind because they'll have, I mean, we've had kids go to Penn and Columbia and Princeton and these kind of colleges and they've come back and said, I'm the bottom 25% of my class because I have the China topper there, right? The guy doesn't lose a mark. He doesn't sleep, right? So. So when you go there, you realize what the competition is all about. If you go to that league of colleges, the competition is absolutely insane. So, so the first thing they want is academics. And academics is everything about your academics, including GRE, GMAT. The second is standardized testing, which is a part of the academic basket. Then it's your profile, right? So your internships, your research papers, your um, any other things that you've done. You're playing tennis for the country. Um, and these things have to align with your letters of recommendation. So if you say in college, I was the head of so-and-so society, I was the head of the consulting club, then it is useful if your professors have mentioned that in L LOR, right? And, and that brings back the point that it is not a clinical activity that you can do. There's a lot of thinking, there's a lot of putting together these points. 
who are you what do you want to position yourself as to the college and is that reflecting in everything you're doing in your application in your essay in your sop in your letters of recommendation in the research paper that you did is that theme coming out again and again and again okay so that's your profile and then is your writing ability which is your sop okay this is my favorite line that great colleges are looking for students who don't need great colleges okay so why is it that kids from wharton do well why is it that kids from harvard do well why is it that kids from uc berkeley do well why is it that kids from johns hopkins do well they don't have a machine to convert a non performer into a performer right so they are looking for people who have that firepower academics is almost eligibility right again i'm talking about top colleges they are they are saying your gpa has to be top notch you should be a straight a student through school you should have aced all your college exams you should have done three research papers your professor should be in love with you and show me that you have the fire show me that you can come to a country which is not your country which is a different planet altogether get settled very quickly thrive in it and be a leader right so will you be one of those alumni who will be our claim to fame you can go to uc berkeley you can go to uc santa barbara and get the same job right so when apple comes to uc berkeley they are not looking at the bottom of the class if you are the top of the class and running the entrepreneurship club and running an incubator and have started two ventures which may be failed they want to talk to you but if you've done the same things in uc santa clara they are fine they'll still speak to you so go to the college where you can be the dude right so you you saw uh one of the guys in our team who's a harvard grad right now he says many times that harvard was the biggest mistake of my life right he says if harvard takes 100 people i was perhaps at 100 kid who just scraped in and then i was like lost like i was studying all night and getting a c and there were people who were on cocaine and they were getting an a right and that's the other shocker when you go to these colleges in the west that suddenly ubc university of british columbia in canada is a substance friendly college do you understand what that means what does it mean so it means there is a vending machine where you can pop in a card and say what kind of marijuana do you want right do you want it in a stick do you want it in a pouch do you want hopefully your parents are not watching this but sorry you can you know what do you want that's a substance friendly co- college so they've eliminated any inhibitions they've eliminated they it's not a taboo right so there is no excitement there oh my god i'm going to have weed today i go have weed boss i mean what's the big deal right so it's so simplistic that if you're not ready for it it can kill you right so when people parents come to us and say should my kid go abroad or not i said there are only two questions to answer how much is the money going to matter if the money doesn't matter you're taking a loan or he's driven he'll earn there or whatever it's fine that's one tick the second tick is how mature is he or she if you're mature enough to deal with that planet and the money is okay absolutely go you can't get that exposure and that opportunity here but if any of those two is a no don't go you can go later in life right maybe you will join a company which will send you for an executive mba maybe the company will transfer you there are many other ways to go but both sundar pichai and uh, satya nadella did their undergrad in india and then went there so you are doing your undergrad in india you can go for your masters later also you can work for 2 years 5 years 10 years and then go right so so that's your profile writing ability great colleges point there is they say it's more difficult to predict which american college will accept your application than what will you get when you roll a dice it's that unpredictable is that unpredictable because it's not just based on your grades they're really looking for a firepower and you have to be a good fit for the college and you have to show that through your application 
right? So that application takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. In terms of essays and SOPs, there is a very famous one which somebody wrote only three words multiple times and got into Stanford. Guess what the three words were? It's very famous. Any idea? Huh? Make a guess. No, the three words were black lives matter. So he wrote black lives matter. Stop. Black lives matter. Stop. Black lives matter. Stop. And he just wrote that. And people say, what if I write Dalit lives matter? What if I write uh, scheduled caste matters? It doesn't work like that. Right? This guy was a black guy. He was the first in seven generations to go to college. He was a topper of his class. He had had an award from Obama. He, had, he was running a large organization, social organization to uplift the blacks. He had gone to jail in one of those agitations. So it fitted in. Right? So you can't just copy these things. Right? So it's got to be your story in your voice that the college will like. Okay? So don't run after big names. Harvard could be your biggest mistake. Harvard could be the best thing for you. Um, Wharton doesn't seem like your biggest mistake, so hopefully you'll get it. But, but make sure you research the college so much, you can give a three-hour talk on that college. Then apply to that college. Otherwise, you will end up in a mess. Remember, college is not your end destination. Right? You don't need to go to college to be successful. Even undergrad, you don't need it. I'm a big believer in... Education has its problems, right? The way we do education needs to change, right? What is education? You come into a classroom, you open a book, we teach. This was great for when there were only two sources of knowledge. One was a thing called a book, and the second was a person called a teacher. Today, all of you have a smartphone, and there is all the knowledge in that, right? So the way education is being imparted needs to change. It's a bigger change, and it'll take time, and all that is fine, but you're not captives of the education system. This is your journey. So get on top of your journey. Become active. Don't be passive. You're passive right now. I guarantee you. You're all passive. You're saying, okay, we are in this college. Now one guy is coming. He will tell us something. We will hear that. Today's a cultural day. I will wear a kurta. I will... It's all good things that you're doing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But how much of your journey are you driving? Right? And a lot of you are saying, right now I don't know what I want to do. You will never know. Dude, there is no magic wand out there. I still don't know what I want to do. Right? And I'm more than double, maybe even triple your age. So hopefully not triple your age. Uh, but at least double your age. Right? So you need to get up and do something. So my principle of life, which I leave everyone with, and if I don't tell it to you, it will be disservice to you and to me is think less, do more. The problem with this generation is you think too much. You think, and you think, and you overthink, and then people say, what are you doing next? You say, I'm thinking. And you say, which college will you go to? You say, I haven't decided. You know, so we had this student who wanted to apply for masters, and he came, and we had a meeting, and we shortlisted two online courses on Coursera. And I said, okay, you research them and decide which one do you want to do. And I didn't meet him after that, and he was working with somebody else. And six months later, I bumped him into him in the office, and I said, oh, which course did you do? And he said, oh, I need to discuss that with you. I said, sure, tell me. He said, you know, the first course is actually, uh, it is very long. It's three months long. And the second course requires a lot of time from me. So I'm evaluating. He said, it's been six months. If you started, you could have done both by now. Right? But your generation is far smarter than my generation. Far smarter. There is no doubt about it. Genetically, every next generation is smarter. Your kids will be smarter than you. You will not accept it. But they will be smarter than you. But you're not using that smartness. You're lost. You're lost in those phones. You're lost in this big bad world and all the knowledge it is throwing at you. You're lost in the fact that Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of school and did, did well. You're lost in so much data points that you're wondering, which one should I go after? And I also want work-life balance, by the way. That's, there is nothing called work-life balance if you want to be super successful. 
if you want an average life then you are okay don't worry there are enough jobs you'll get a job you'll get some 30000 40000 salary it will be okay you might get fired if there is retrenchment and a downturn then you can sit at home your parents will feed you then you can again go back to college right but if you really want to make a difference then you need to be on a different path so how many of you want to be super successful how many of you want to be ceos entrepreneurs run billion dollar companies how many of you want to be super successful so all but one which is okay and it's okay it's be self aware there is nothing wrong i have great friends who don't want to work too hard and that's fine right but if you want to be super successful if you always do what you always did or what people always did you will always get what people always got right so what do most people do they go to a college then they go do a masters then they join a company and that company gives them a stipend then they have a 6 month internship or a induction period when they are in college where will you do internship by college will decide they will get me an internship we will do a job these 50 companies come for placement we will see because what do companies want companies want to get work done and they are looking for people who will work whether you did an mba or did not do an mba went to harvard went to wharton went to iim ahmedabad is good all that is just a symptom which is showing them what kind of fever do you have right do you have that energy fever or do you have the netflix fever that's what they're trying to find out right but if somebody looks at your resume and say man mind blowing everybody will hire you right so that's what you need to do college is not the end destination your your wharton is not the end. will you live forever in wharton no wharton is a step right so don't depend on wharton depend on yourself so that's the other one will you go to harvard and be the backbencher or will you go to a mid tier college and be the dude change the way the college looks doesn't matter where sharma ji's son went right you all have uncles and aunts and neighbors and seniors and it doesn't matter what they did right maybe so people say mark zuckerberg bill gates steve jobs michael dell all dropped out of colleges and did well i should also know at the right time third year drop out right that's what people say but look at that go deeper into their stories right so michael dell needed a, la- a computer he's a jew right do you know michael dell is a jew no so you know what is the strongest trait of jews they are very stingy so his parents won't give him money so he went bought spare parts sat in his dorm room all night for many nights and made that computer and then he realized the same computer is available for x let's say 1000 dollars i made it for 400 dollars and then his friend came to him and said i need a computer too he said take mine 700 dollars so he sold for 300 dollars profit then he got another set of spare parts built another computer and he started selling every week he was selling a computer and after some time there was a queue so he hired three four students and said let's make computers i'll pay you and then he started doing this in his own garage and then one fine day he realized i don't need what am i doing in this college right i'm wasting time and he dropped out so when you are that passionate so clear about your purpose then drop out but otherwise education is a good thing so get it good colleges abroad require good planning and execution we talked about it don't apply in a rush wherever you want to apply understand where you want to go that's the country where you'll spend 2 3 4 10 20 years right so make sure you make the right moves aim high don't sell yourself short so a lot of times we feel my grades are not good i'm maybe my parents can't afford this there are many ways to do these things so don't sell yourself short this is about you this is about your journey or career you want to be that super successful guy and you started off selling yourself short you will never get there <clears throat> be confident and enjoy the application journey it's not a monster it takes time it takes energy but enjoy it because it's about your future 
don't be in a rush to go abroad and accept any college so he said i'll apply after 2 years which is great rush is gone pressure is gone right you also said i'll apply after a few years so let's say you apply after 2 years or you apply after 3 years to what and don't get in fine keep working apply after 3 years again right but don't be in a rush have a plan b right people say i've applied to 10 i'll go i'm quitting now i'll quit my job sit at home because i'm going to go abroad now you say how many offers do you have no none then no no but i have decided i have applied to 10 ek to milega na right that's stupid masters is for grown ups this is not undergrad be prepared you will have 40 year olds in your class look at the average age uh, of people in these classes you will have people who have kids right you go into the western world even for undergrad you realize that parents fund children's lives till 16 after that 30% still fund 70% don't fund kids leave they go outside they work at starbucks they work at some courier company they work some place save some money five of them live together when they've saved enough money they go back to school finish their high school again go back to work take a loan from a student loan company a sally may or somewhere then go for their undergrad when they go for their undergrad they are 25 year old but that 25 year old who's going in for undergrad can beat this entire class in a group discussion because he's lived life he's had a loan that he's paying off he's had multiple relationships he's had, i'm not saying it's good or bad to have relationships don't misunderstand me but he's lived life right he's got a car he's got uh, apartment on rent he's living a complete life so by 25 from 16 he's faced challenges he's seen the highs and lows he's not led a protected life you know in my journey as a as a corporate guy i've made offers to 40 year olds and i remember this guy very clearly we offered him a vice president role and i shook his hands and said when can you join and he said can i let you know tomorrow then i said why he said one today is a thursday i said okay so and he said thursdays are not great days for me to make a decision I normally make good decisions on Tuesday. So okay, fine, whatever. How will you make decisions in the company? But anyways, second, he said my father is traveling. So what does your father have to do it? He said, no, I have to ask my father also. No, if I should join here or not. So we lead such a protected life that you have to break out of. Right? This is going to be your career, not your parents' career. Have all the respect for them, but at some stage you need to say, this is my journey. right when you how many few i don't know if it's right to ask but um some of you have smoked you don't have to answer right some of you have had a drink some of you have got drunk right do your parents know about it no right so when you want to go into a job your parents suddenly become very important right you do all other things and you don't ask them for this thing you need to do the job that you are passionate about right don't live somebody else's dream so i have a lot of these thumb rules principles that i live by and one of them is your time has to be a division of 90 10 of the time you should be productive 10% of the time you can be unproductive you can watch a movie you can chill you can party you can do whatever worst case it should be 80 20 anything further and you're not going to crack it and what is productive watching a movie is not productive making a movie is productive anything which is challenging where you will learn something is productive simple rule each one of you if you want to be successful needs to become a brand right you you know there is somebody called sundar pichai you know there is somebody called satya nadella you know there is somebody called barack obama you know there is somebody called uh, garvita gulati now you need to become a similar brand it doesn't cost money it doesn't cost a degree it just requires effort and there's only one ceo for that brand me which is you if you are not interested in being your ceo nobody is nobody gives a shit about it right so if you're not going to think about how today went what went right what went wrong before you go to sleep nobody else is thinking about it If you don't wake up tomorrow morning with a sense of purpose, nobody else will drive that sense of purpose in you. There is no injection for it. 
And if you want to be, if you genuinely want to be super successful, it's not going to happen. That's my guarantee. I can bet on it. Right? I've built careers for thousands and thousands of people. So I can bet on it for you. Right? We've seen many, many, many successful people who were not good in college, who were not good in school. So there is your limitations are the limitations that you believe are your limitations. There is no other. You want to be the president of America one day, you can be. But you need to firmly believe in it and go after it. Okay, I'll leave you with that. All the best. Do well. And if you ever need help, just reach out.